You know, ladies and gentlemen, when the California Golden Seals drafted this guy 88 overall in the 1970 NHL draft, there was no indication he was going to be turning into one of the most important coaches and executives in NHL history. But a lot of people knew of his legacy before he came into the NHL. They knew that he was a dedicated uh, person in all facets of hockey, came from a very strong hockey family. But when Terry Murray... Big drink of water, 6'2", 190. Came to first major prominence with Ottawa of the OHA. We knew he was going to do something in his life in hockey. And boys, he's done it. Now, uh, the defenseman had a very solid career in Ottawa on the defensive side. He played over 153 regular season games uh, in 68, 69, 70 combined. And with uh, 49 points. Now, not a big goal scorer and a good stay-at-home Rod Langway defenseman. He played for Pembroke of the OPJHL before entering uh, Major Junior. Now, uh, the 88 overall draft made him one of the lowest uh, draft picks from the uh, Seals history to make the big team. Now, as a player, Murray defied the odds by making it to the big show as a late-round draft pick, but it was his coaching that truly made his mark. He became the 20th NHL head coach to work behind the bench for a thousand games on November 12, 2011 with L.A. As a result, he lasted longer in the NHL than almost every one of his fellow 1970 draftees. After he played his final NHL game in 82, he made the transition with help from his older brother Brian, who had been head coach in Terry's final NHL season with Washington. Brian hired Terry's at Capitals AC for the 83 campaign, making them the first pair of brothers uh, in NHL history to simultaneously serve as head coach and AC of the same squad. Terry would get his first head coaching job eight years later when his brother was fired by the Caps, but the partnership between the two brothers would continue to be a factor in Terry's career as he later landed a head coaching job in Florida while Brian was serving as the team's uh, GM. Now, his first contract came up in 1970. His debut was October 14, 72, uh, when uh, the Seals played Pittsburgh. He uh, made it all the way to the early 80s. His last game was against Montreal uh, in uh, April 4, 82. He eventually retired in the fall of that year, deciding not to go into the 83 uh, uh, season. Now, his first game of coach, uh, as coach, of co- a thousand game as coach, came against... Uh, between L.A. and Minnesota. Now, he had uh, more success in the minors than he had in the pros, and i tell you why. He was kind of a running gag. I think he was 220 games before he scored his first NHL game after 10 seasons. Now, he played nine games for the 72 Boston squad that went on to win the AHL regular season uh, crown. He also played on the 75 Salt Lake team that won the CHL regular season uh, title and the Adams Cup in the postseason. Now, he played on the Philadelphia team, of course, that lost to Montreal in the 76 Stanley Cup Finals as kind of the number six defenseman, but he showed himself well. He also played on the 78 main team that won the AHL regular season title and went on to take the Calder Cup. He won the AHL Eddie Shaw Award as the league's top defenseman with Maine in the 78 campaign and was named to the AHL All-Star First Team. Now, He also played on the main team that won the 79 regular season title in AHL and the Calder Cup uh, a couple of weeks later. And was also named the top defenseman in 79 in the association and made it to the All-Star first team. Now again, he scored his first NHL goal in his 219th NHL game for Philadelphia on March 14, 81 at the New York Islanders, beating, of all people, Hall of Famer Billy Smith. Now, he was also the head coach of the Philly team that lost to Detroit in the 97 Stanley Cup Finals, but may have been fired uh, because of a comment he allegedly made that the Flyers had choked against Detroit, and he was ironically fired a few few, uh, days after the the, uh, the final. Now, he also uh, coached internationally at the World Championships in Norway in 99. He was Team USA head coach, uh, finishing uh, sixth. Now, Talking about his uh, playing career first, and then we'll get into his uh, coaching uh, career. Like I said, he had played with Pembroke of the CJHL before moving on to Ottawa. His first pro team was the Providence Reds, where he had 23 points in 57 regular season games in 71. He played with the Baltimore Clippers, the Boston Braves, and the Oklahoma City Blazers in 1972 with 7 points 
in 56 contests. Now 73 broke in with the Seals, uh, playing in 23 games with three assists, and also played with Salt Lake that year, 11 points in 39 games and 9 playoff contests. 74 with the Seals, his first full campaign, technically he's rookie, 12 assists in 58 games. 75, he found himself uh, splitting time with California and Salt Lake, 2 points in 9 games with California, and 35 points in uh, 62 games with Salt Lake. Now, with the Flyers again, their, their playoff run, he was called up from Richmond after a 56-point regular season, played three games in a regular campaign and six in the playoffs with one assist. Now, 77, he played 36 games with the Flyers, 13 assists, and also then shifted to the Red Wings where he had seven points in 23 games. 78, he was uh, again with the Miners with the Philadelphia Firebirds and the Maine Mariners, 11 goals, 41 assists for 52 points in 75 games. Now, 79, played five games with the big squad, but another great season in, uh, in uh, Maine, uh, 37 points in 55 games, another MVP and a playoff victory. 1980, he had 22 points in 68 games, and 81, after almost four years mired in the minors, no, no pun intended, he got back to the Flyers with 18 points in 71 games, including one goal, and played two games with Maine. 82, he wrapped up his uh, campaigns in the NHL with a very solid season. Uh, three goals and 22 assists uh, for 25 points in 74 games. So final NHL totals, 80 points in 302 games, four goals. And in the uh, WHL, uh, 196 points in 363 games uh, with... Uh, uh, 196 points in 363 games, 24 points in 50 playoff contests. Now, uh, coaching career, we're just going to cover uh, the main stuff. He coached Washington to four straight playoff finishes between 1993, uh, mostly over 500. Then, unfortunately, the bad 94 season, where he was eventually fired after a 20, 23 and 4 record. Now, with the Flyers, again, three straight uh, playoff appearances, uh, loss in the Stanley Cup uh, to, De to Detroit, uh, a rough go again, ladies and gentlemen, but again, well over 500, a strong coach. Now, with Florida, uh, he had uh, one playoff appearance, uh, best season, of course, was uh, 19, uh, 2000 with a 43-27-6 record. Then the LA Kings for several years. He helped them to two playoff appearances in 2010 and 2011, and then was fired in the 2012 season. So final initial totals as of this writing, 499 uh, wins, 383 losses, 89, uh, uh, 89 uh, ties, 41 overtime losses, with a 50-51 and 51 record in the... Uh, uh, the, the post season. Now, uh, the, the, he was again, Washington's AC between 82 and 80, 88. He was Baltimore head coach on May, uh, mid May 17, 88, stayed there in 1990. He, uh, he was named Cincinnati's head coach on, in February 94 and stayed there until the end of the campaign. Again, Philly head coach, 94-97, Florida head coach, 98-2000, to and uh, also a Philadelphia AC for uh, much of 2003-2008. to LA head coach, again, 2008-2011, to and again, uh, Ida Roundack head coach uh, from Ju June 29th, uh, 2012. Now, it's... Terry uh, Terry's style can best be described as almost uh, easy going. Now with the Lee Valley uh, uh, Phantoms when he in the AHL at the time, Murray was the only coach in the AHL who had coached <coughs> in the league in the 1980s and continued into the, the new century. He was eventually later named as an assistant coach for the Sabres on June 18, 2005, and returned to the Phantoms as an AC in December of 2008. Now, Terry and his wife Linda uh, reside in Scarborough, Maine, beautiful community, with two daughters, Megan and Lindsay. Now, Murray was one of ten children of Clarence and Rhonda Murray, and of course, he was born in the beautiful Ottawa Valley town of Shawville, uh, Quebec, which of course is in the uh, the Ottawa uh, Basin. Uh, he's uh, he just passed his 72nd birthday, and it was a great uh, great acclaim because. Uh, basically, everyone is considering uh, the fact 
uh, will he win his 500 game one of these days? Well, that's a good question. I would figure bring Terry up for one game and give him that 500. Uh, you know, it would be a nice uh, round number for his career. Now, not everybody likes Terry Murray's uh, coaching style. I do, but like I said, he's sort of like the poor man's uh, Scotty Bowman. But not uh, not to degrade him, but he's all when he talks, people listen. I think what happened in '97 when uh, uh, the Flyers basically didn't do well against Detroit, saying his team choked. Well, they had a better roster than Detroit in a few categories, and maybe that was a factor that the Flyers didn't have enough intestinal fortitude to beat a team that was coming on. But that's just my personal opinion. So that's a legacy of Terry Murray all the way from almost, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, not say a late round pick, but kind of an afterthought and becoming one of the most important hockey minds of the last 50 plus years. If you like what we're doing here with our Seals podcast or uh, any other uh, vintage NHL or WHA, let us know with a like, comment, or subscribe. And don't forget, this is just my personal opinion, but I've seen these people coach and play. Terry Murray in the minors was there almost as a player coach. I know for a fact he wasn't just there as a, as a skater because you could get any type of defenseman to play his game. This guy was just soaking up, soaking up information. And just like Bobby Clark, uh, he was a, a legacy flyer. He, w- he will always be uh, connected with the flyers in their, uh, what they call their, their glory years, like Paul Holmgren and uh, people like that. So, anyway, thanks for listening. Bye.